my creatives so today I have a different video than usual for you because I'm trying something new out uh, first I'm going to prep my page with gesso I want to let you know that I'm recording this voiceover next to my husband so if you hear any keypads or gaming noises that is him uh, <laughs> and it is quite late uh, I want to get this video up for you guys for tomorrow so let's go back to the page. I did a layer of gesso and I'm drying that. Crossing my fingers because this is the first time that I'm doing an image transfer. I have never done this before. I didn't practice beforehand and I thought I would share how things went uh, with this image transfer. So I'm using a heavy gel medium matte from Amsterdam. And first thing I'm gonna say, I think it's better to use the regular gel medium and not the heavy. I don't have that gel medium at my, uh, I don't have it in my stash right now. So I worked with this. And at first I thought, well, things are going well. I took like a bone folder to burnish everything down. And I saw a video from Mixed Media Gen where she did the image transfer and I was trying to recreate it, but I think I made a mistake or things weren't dry on certain spots and too dry on others so I don't know I left everything in for you guys so you can see how it went but it did, didn't turn out great and I will tell you why um, so the image came off in certain spots but in other spots it didn't so I think it's just because on certain places I have more of the matte gel medium so this is going okay and not okay so i'm trying it again looking on the other side i'm like hmm, no it's not quite working and then i realized that my gesso was coming up so i was like okay i'm just going trying to make it work maybe when i dry it some bit but that didn't help uh, so i just tore it off and see what would happen uh, if I did that and as you can see now I rip a whole piece of it it's just because my gesso came up I don't know I think it wasn't dry enough and uh, now I'm um, like removing the pieces of paper that are left behind so on one side the image transfer was kind of okay it will never be perfect I think I have to be more patient for that um, but I just did what everyone else did on the videos and it was it's okay for the first time, I guess. This was not what I was going for, but uh, I made it work. And I will tell you exactly how I made it work. So immediately I saw the really nice texture that it gave me. Unfortunately, because my gesso pulled up and a bit of the paper, um, it got a bit thin and uh, I had to cover that up again with gesso to strengthen my pages. So here's here I'm showing you that the gesso stuck to the paper and not to my page anymore. Um, so I'm taking the last piece of paper off and then I grab my gesso again and I start putting it on the places where it got pulled up. Well, that looked a bit weird and a big contrast with the image transfer, like a very harsh line. So I wasn't, I wasn't happy with this look, not at all. So I decided to water down my gesso and put it over the whole image and then look at it as textured. So if things don't work out as planned, you can also use them in another way. I looked at it as texture and I thought, wouldn't it be fun to make a super vintage distress page? Because that is what the paper gave me. So I grab up my distress paints. This is scattered straw. I took frayed burlap and vintage photo and I just went to town with my distress paint. Uh, the scattered straw one is the one that I recently got so I really wanted to use that one and I just started playing around with my fingers and some paint.
I really like the texture that I was getting. You could really see the structure of the paper because I was adding the paint. And especially when I started to add the darker colors, it really came to the front and I really, really, really like that. So I will just keep on working until I like this page. So after I dried this, I missed some blue, of course, I really like the rusty blue look. I don't know how you call that, uh, the, the typical vintage look with some blue in there. And I really, I know that the distress paints layer really beautiful because they're not opaque. So you can still see the colors underneath, uh, but also see the color on top. And of course I'm going to dry this again. And then I had an idea. How would my Distress Oxides react on this layer of paint and gesso and paper? So I just figured, well, let's go for it. I already messed up my page and let's make it an experimental one. And I really, really like the effect that I'm getting. I'm using uh, peeled paint right now and I'm going to spray some water on that to get the Distress Oxides to activate. And of course this involves a lot of drying and layering. And I also take the vintage photo and just went for it. Trying new things out. So of course I had to add some blue again. This is the broken china from the distress oxides and I'm doing the same what I did all the time and just layering everything up. I really really love the distress look. The, I really really love it. So now I'm taking my water bottle and the reason that I'm spraying it first in my hand is that that way I get bigger splotches than when I do it the way I'm doing it right now. And I like the variety of size. Uh, because the Distress Oxides are react with water you get an extra oxidation or you can pick up the ink to make some kind of a bleach effect. This also works with dilutions and all the Distress products. Even with the paints, although you have to be quick with the paints because they, when they are dried, they are permanent. And now it's time for some stenciling and I figured, well, I'm in a Super Tim Holtz mood. Let's take some Distress inks, the regular ones in Vintage Photo. I don't think too much about when I place my stencils down. It's more for a background and the texture. I just do what feels good and it's quite randomly when I do this. I don't really have a plan. 
the only plan I had for this page was I want to try an image transfer and this is what came out. So you don't always have to have a plan on what you're going to create. Just try something, if it doesn't work, make it work and you will be challenged. I'm going to have the same approach with this stencil from the Crafters Workshop, but this time I'm going to use Liquitex Live Modeling Paste. This is by far my favorite modeling paste ever. It's fluffy, it dries quick, um, and it's not opaque. And I love it how it takes up the ink underneath. So I'm just going to put this down randomly. I didn't even think of a focal point yet. I was like, I want to play and have some fun and see if I can make this page work. So I let this dry uh, for a little while and in the meantime I went through all the beautiful happy mail that I got from you guys and I found some awesome pieces that really fitted this page. I believe this is a piece from Marie and this is a piece from Lizzie that I'm using and the quote on there is perfect for this page. It says life is like photography. Uh, I have to wait to see what the rest is. At least it says something about negatives and I thought it was really fitting uh, with my failure um, from my page. I learned from it and I really made a beautiful page, I think. I really love what I did here. So mistakes aren't a bad thing. They happen and you can turn them the way you want them. Just be open-minded and don't let yourself get down by mistakes. Especially in art. I think I learned most in art uh, by making mistakes and I call them happy accidents. I think I heard Dina Wakely say that before. They're happy accidents or Donna Downey. I don't know uh, who said that before, but I learned that and it's true. There are happy accidents because I've got really nice texture on my page. The arrows are from Happy mail that I got from Ali. She had sent me a bunch of die cuts and I really, really loved it. The mask was also from her, but I couldn't make it work on this page. Um, maybe because I want to hold it because it's so pretty <laughs> that I didn't want to put it on here. Um, but I'm really loving uh, all these little things. And the blue thing you saw me use, that's the back of the 3x4 card that I have ripped. Uh, down to size. I stake everything down with just regular all-purpose glue I buy at Action. Uh, I love this glue, it's super cheap, it sticks like crazy. Um, it's not acid-free, but I don't worry about that right now. This is Distressed Crackle Paint in clear rock candy, and I thought the crackle would finish this page perfect. And I just have the same as pro approaches with the stencils. I just put it on there where I think it would look nice, and after putting this on my page I let it dry for at least overnight I think it took a night before it was completely dry but it's no problem just leave it there and an important thing is with the distressed crackle paint that you really let it air dry to get the optimal crackle I don't know how to say that the best crackle you can get and um, yeah, that, that's it for this page. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, there are some still shots at the end. I want to let you know that uh, Simply Creative Kira has opened shop. And if you click the link down below, you can check out what I made. I have some Traveler's Notebooks, stationery sets and some art prints from myself available for you to purchase. So I really hope that you would check it out. And in future videos, I will show you what I do with my own stuff. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all next time. Bye!